probably all seen Isla, Isla's whales. Um, so that means she's 4,412 days old. Yay! I think that's quite an achievement. <laughs> Given that, as you probably all are aware, that the best estimate was you'll get 5 to 21 days if you're lucky. That was where we started from and, and now we're at 12 years old. Um, I would say over our life, probably over the first year of our life, we spent six months on and off in and out of hospital. She's been on life support four times, um, twice for rhinovirus, which is just basically a snotty cold, uh, once for RSV, which is a respiratory issue, and once for MPV, which is methanumovirus, which is basically um, such a heavy cold that you think you're drowning. Um, conversely, when she had the flu, she rocked it. Um, so, She's a, a wee enigma. Um, we've had emergency bill surgery when she was six months old. We spoke nice to the surgeon and said, could you poke a hole in her please and put a gastrostomy into it? She was like, well, I mean, we'll see what's in there. And then he came out four or five hours later and said, well, we poked a hole in her and put a gastrostomy in. Um, so I was fed through her tummy, um, thankfully, which um, is, has been her saving grace when she was younger. Um, it allowed us to get nutrition in, it allowed us to see a really frail, quite sickly child thrive. Um, she started to put on weight, she started to grow, um, and I'm convinced that that was all down to having a gastrostomy, having a, a, a way to feed her, um, because as everybody knows, you will not be able to feed your child. Yes. Essentially, I wanted to be able to breastfeed. I couldn't do that. I started with the NG tube and um, just like you did with Amber, standing at the <laughs> in your neck caught and you're holding on to the syringe, watching it very slowly trickle down. But at the end of the day, I was able to feed her, you know. And then when she got the gastrostomy in, it became easier. We had a pump, we could feed overnight, which meant she got more nutrition in. And that was when she started thriving. So you went from having a child who was what, what I thought as a, a first time mother and a first time medical mother, I thought this child was just, I was looking after a dying baby. Then you started to see that actually, no, you're, you're just enabling this child to live the best life that they could. Um, she's had a variety of health issues. Um, she had diaphragmatic hernia. Um, that was repaired at seven. Uh, the surgeon told me, well, we don't, we don't see many children at your, um, at your age, and that was why they had a, a neonatal midwife in the consultation room with them. Um, but we went in, we did the repair, and her breathing improved pretty much um, from the surgeon's point of view automatically as soon as they put the repair in. The lower left part of the lung inflated, which it hadn't done for seven years. And like Carolyn was saying, a lot of Isla's problems are left-sided and that's just one of the things that, that, that you're aware of when you're dealing with Isla is if anything's a bit hinky or if anything's going to go a bit wrong, it'll be on the left side. So it's quite bizarre. I don't know my left and my right, but I know where Isla's left is, <laughs> which is a bit... <laughs> so, um, and now she um, has been signed off for spinal surgery. So Isla's spine, so she's got scoliosis and a bit of kyphosis. To look at her, you wouldn't really think anything. She kind of leans a little bit to the left. Um, but her spine, if you look at it in an x-ray, looks like a question mark in the middle. Mm -hmm. So that's compressing her, her lungs. So she's back on oxygen overnight, temporarily until we get spinal surgery and hopefully that will, that will be another fix. Um, in terms of socialisation and education, we had um, two years at nursery and seven years at primary in Lockie's school. Um, so that was that was nice, but it was almost a decade of being very comfortable with all the staff and all the people and everybody knew Ella. And then this year she started high school. Um, so that was a bit of a... Um, well, I had a wobble. She didn't have a wobble at all. She was more than ready for it. <laughs> uh, and she is absolutely loving it. She comes back as high as a kite, wired to the moon, and she's obviously had a fantastic day. 
Um, and I, I get little snippets back because one of our carers is actually one of the LEs in school. So you'll get things like, she was mental today. <laughs> right, I'll take that as a good thing then. <laughs> um, so we've had over a decade with Isla. She still will um, surprise us. She still um, does things that we hadn't anticipated or medically things evolve and new th issues come up. So you, you never quite get out of the, the sort of... Um, been on tender hooks with Isla. There's always something that you're working on, or something that you're watching, or something that you're investigating. As, um, as you know, with with feeding, you're always <laughs> at the how many calories and how many liters of water, and you know you, there's always something going on in the background. So you're never, you're never, your head's never at rest. There's always something going on, um, which is predominantly why I'm not doing a presentation on PowerPoint because I just didn't have the bandwidth um, this time because I'm, I'm investigating all this spinal surgery stuff. Um, growing older means she's a bit more robust um, but it also means that there are other challenges for example like I was talking with Liz earlier, um, toileting. When you go to any kind of facility there are always special need toilets. What they don't say is that the disabled toilets will only service a certain percentage of disabled people, mm -hmm. um, particularly you know, when those people are too big to put on one of those baby change um, tables. Um, and we found that out when one of the baby change tables sort of started teetering on the <laughs> bridge, <laughs> got a baby sort of lying, um, lying across it. So. So that, that adds in a challenge, things like transport, um, you've got to have a larger car, so um, it, none of these flashy sports models in my, um, in my future anymore, um, it, I've got the big mummy van, <laughs> um, but you know, having a van that you can just wheel her into, clamp her in and then get in the car is actually it's what I aspire to. Do you know that? <laughs> uh, that's one of the the, um, the good bits about having the motability aspect of social working um, in place is that you get the funding for the cars. Things like having to speak to the motability charity people because we had to have a seat in the van which is basically like an ambulance chair. It folds all the way down because when you're out and about, how do you toilet her if there's no toilets available? So um, we have a, a seat that can fold down, we can move Isla onto the chair and um, get her changed there safely. Um, it's not great for me because I'm bent over, but it's the safest option that we have just now and I'm, I'm thankful for it. Um, we moved house two years ago because um, my, I did my knee in and my back trying to lift her up and down the stairs to bed. Um, so we're now in a bungalow, we've got ramps in that mean that I can just feel Isla straight into any of the rooms. Um, we have a rise and fall bath, she can shower or be bathed on this, it has a plinth that comes over. Um, we take her swimming. We haven't done the horse riding thing yet but we have done skiing. We've been to um, We've been to Percody Ice Rink where some of the um, the ice hockey team took our quicking round. <laughs> <laughs> that was uh, we went with um, the Rachel House staff, um, so we were all kind of wobbling about on two skates on the, on the ice rink, and this boy was whipping round and basically lapping us <laughs> um, as we sort of fumbled from one holding point to another <laughs> <laughs> along the, along the, the, bar, uh, the barrier. Um, she was thrilled with this and she thought it was absolutely hilarious and it was one of our best days ever, um, as you could see by the, the big grin on her face. Um, so I think really, you know, we're, we're lucky we've still got our kids and um, we're reminded of that every day. Um, it's it's quite humbling to stand here and say, you know, I've got Isla and she's 12 years old and never, never in my wildest dream. But 
it does have an impact. It has an impact on pretty much every aspect of life um, and also on the parents' health. Um, I've ripped my calf twice purely by wheeling Isla in a four stone buggy. She's four stone, so you're pushing this eight stone object in front of you. And all I was doing was crossing the road. Um, so things that I think we need to be cognizant of is we need to take care of us as well as the child and make sure that all the provisions are in place when we can't be there to, um, to make sure that they're safe. Um, but as I say, I am blessed to be able to stand here in front of you today and say, you know, she's, she's just my wee, um, my wee girl and she's still with us. Mm -hmm.